What's up everybody, Keith Mitchell here, Editor-in-Chief of the Outer Haven Productions. And before I go into today's episode, I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to all the fathers out there. The fathers who were there from day one and the people who stepped in to fill the void where a father was missing for one reason or another. This is Father's Day and a big shout out to you. Just like I've had many people shout out to me wishing me a happy Father's Day. So thank you for everybody who gave me Father's Day wishes and my Father's Day wishes go out to everybody else. Now switching gears, this is all about video games of course. Um, last couple of days there were a lot of people talking about uh, a prediction of sorts from gaming industry analyst Michael Practor who stated that the, uh, the PlayStation 5, it's not really called PlayStation 5, Sony hasn't told us what it's going to be called, but he says that it's going to be $800. Now I think that was taken out of context just because um, I went back and I watched the footage, it was on E3 Live when he was talking to Jeff Keighley, and he didn't say it was going to be $800, he was joking, he was being very candid, saying that $800. He then goes back and says, you know, I would hope they wouldn't sell this thing at $600, because, you know, the PlayStation 3, when it came out, it launched at $599, and it was very abysmal for Sony, it didn't sell well, it, the launch was terrible, they didn't have a lot of games. PlayStation 3 launch will go down as one of the worst launches in gaming history. Worse than SNK's Neo Geo, worse than the Atari Jaguar, it was just bad. It was really bad and this is Sony. This is Sony who has caught up to Microsoft at the end of the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 era, surpassed Microsoft in many ways during the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One era and now they're looking at both the Xbox and also PC gaming and saying, hey, you know, we can't rest. We need to keep going. So I don't think Sony's gonna come out and say PlayStation 5 or whatever they call this new system, it's gonna be 599 or even 699. I'm calling it, I'm saying it's gonna be $500. Just like I think Microsoft is gonna launch their Xbox Scarlet or whatever they're gonna call it when it launches. 499, at the most 599, I'm sorry, 550. If you sell a console at $600, it's not gonna sell. And anybody who knows anything in the gaming industry knows that when you sell a console, at least now, you have to bite the bullet. You have to lose some money on that one. Consoles don't bring in the money. The games bring in the money. So I'm pretty sure that both Microsoft and Sony are going to sell their consoles at $500. Obviously, I don't have a crystal ball here. Money going off of trends, money going off of uh, past history. And I think that $500 is going to be the sweet spot. Yeah, there's a lot of great technology in both these new up upcoming consoles but to get them into our homes to get mommy and daddy to buy them on Christmas to get uh, the struggling gamer who wants this brand new console for the people who want bleeding edge and to buy multiple consoles because there are people like that $500 is definitely the sweet spot so I kind of agree with uh, Michael Practor this time and we don't always see eye to eye we don't know each other obviously but we don't always see eye to eye he makes some really off-the-wall predictions at time to time but I do think that Sony and Microsoft would be crazy to sell their next generation consoles at $600. Obviously, we'll know more about this. Maybe we'll, we'll know more about Sony toward the end of this year when they have their PlayStation experience. Microsoft, probably beginning of next year. Um, we're, we're, we're starting to ramp up for the next generation of console fight. We've already seen Microsoft talk about theirs big time 83. I don't think Sony's gonna sit there and go, okay, great, Microsoft's got all the attention. Expect to see something big from Sony coming out soon. Okay, that said, uh, let's switch our gears to Stadia, Google Stadia. So a couple weeks ago, they had their Google Stadia Direct or Google Stadia Connect, excuse me. And I watched it with my teammates here at the Outer Haven. And honestly, I'm, I'm a bit disappointed of what they showed us because out of two games that were exclusive to that platform, nothing else was worthwhile. Pretty much everything that's coming to the Google Stadia is available on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and or PC, which is not good. If you're launching this new system, well, this new service that many people are already very apprehensive about, everybody's saying that this is not going to go well, it's not going to do well, it's not going to sell well, well, then you should probably show us something that makes us want to go out and buy the console. Now, that said, I did go ahead and pre-purchase the Google Stadia Founders Edition just because a, I want to get a hands-on with it because I know Google's not going to send us a, a kit to play up, play with. Um, I want to access to the controller. I want to access to everything so when it comes out day one, we can play with it here at the Outer Haven. 
do some testing of her own, some benchmarking of her own, compare it to the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC, and go from there. So obviously, if we're a gaming outlet and we're talking about a game, we gotta have access to all the gaming stuff. That said, for the casual gamer and hardcore gamer, Google didn't really show us anything that was really worthwhile, and that's really discouraging. I was hoping they'd come out and say, hey, Google Stadia this, we've got brand new games here, something you can only do here, and they totally didn't do it, which is bad because you've got Microsoft Project Cloud, X Cloud, I keep screwing that name up, that is really gunning for them. And Microsoft is not scared. Microsoft is saying, we got this. They've got access to the biggest cloud infrastructure in the world with Azure. And no, Google does not dwarf Azure. I've seen a lot of people say this, and that is not true. Microsoft has been rolling out data centers and regions and Azure on a monthly, bi-monthly basis. You have to check that out. They're growing exponentially. When it comes to the big three in cloud infrastructure, it's Azure, AWS, then Google. There's a reason Sony is going to Azure. There's a lot of reasons why a lot of people are now starting to migrate to Azure because it's big. That said, we're not here to talk about IT because I do that every day from Monday to Friday. I don't want to talk about that right now. Let's get back to Stadia. So um, I've said it before. I've said it in my articles. I will not downplay Google Stadia. I want to see what it's capable about, capable of. Um, but I think the Direct, well, the, the Connect was not a very good conference. They needed to show people on stage playing that game, any game. They needed to show us the latency, the lag delay. They needed to show us how easy it is to start a game from, from start to finish, um, showing us why we want this system. And again, they did nothing of the sort. So they got a very big uphill battle, not just with Microsoft's Project X Cloud, but also with conventional consoles. And they said that this is just something that's not something that they can just Oh, it's not a box, it's everywhere. Okay, great. You have a great sales pitch, fantastic. Your problem is you need to market it to people and you're not doing a great job. One, you need a good, decent internet connection, which is problematic in all the United States of America. Two, the games aren't very appealing outside of the ones that we have. Your two exclusives are not very appealing. You need to show us more. Three, you have not shown us a side-by-side -side comparison with conventional gaming. Yeah, sure, your big pitch is convenience. Who wants to go on a trip or E3 or PAX or wherever and pack up their Xbox and their PlayStation? I know I hate doing that stuff, but Google Stadia would be like, oh, hey, you can just take this dongle with you and hook up, great. But if the if the latency is terrible, if it's depending on my internet connection, and we all know how hotel Wi-Fi are, it, it's terrible, then Google Stadia is useless for me. So I'm really hoping that people aren't discounting Stadia too much, but at the same time, if you look at it at the big picture, at the high level, Google's got a lot of worrying to think about. They've got a lot of things in their end that I don't think they thought too well about or thought about all the scenarios. Either way, Google Stadia, as I said before, has a very big, very large uphill battle. Speaking of Google Stadia, there was a story that came out the other day, and we also reported on that one. It came from PC Gamer that noticed that Bungie updated their Destiny 2 FAQ stating that Google Stadia will not have crossplay. Okay, okay. Everybody saw that story and took that story and ran with it. But the problem was they saw the story, they didn't use common sense, and they just started spreading doomsday, apocalyptic, it's the end of the world for Destiny 2 on Google Stadia. Now, it may be, but here's the thing. The story was Google Stadia, I'm sorry, Destiny 2 on Google Stadia does not support cross-play. Guess what? None of them do. None of them will. Bungie has stated they wanted to get cross-play into Destiny 2. Yes, but right now, they're only working on cross-save. So if I play on Xbox One, I can pick up my game and play it on the PlayStation 4, or my game save will be available on the PC, or it'll be available on the Google, on the Google Stadia. That's what they're working on now. Cross save, cross play, which is the ability to play with people on Xbox, PlayStation, PC. It's not in, it's not there right now. Bungie has stated they want to get that in the game eventually, but for right now, it's cross save. So the big fuss, the big, oh no, it's the end of the world for Google Stadia because it doesn't have, uh, well, Destiny 2 and Google Stadia because it doesn't have cross play. It's not in the game. It's not slated to come to the game. This is not a big deal. So why is everybody picking up this story and saying 
pretty terrible things about Google Stadia. Outside of the stuff we've already said. We, we know it's not going to be great, but God darn it, guys. Give the system a chance and stop spreading lies. I get it. Clicks and traffic are important for people. I totally understand that. But if you're saying, hey, this game doesn't have cross-play, but this game does, but wait, that game doesn't have it, basically at the end of the day saying destiny 2 on google Stadia doesn't have crossplay is well irrelevant because none of the consoles the pc doesn't have it either has no crossplay it might come i'm pretty sure it will come uh, bungie has stated that there's no big technical difficulties on impl implementing this it's just that right now they want to get cross save put in play and i understand that it makes a lot of sense to me so uh guys that's it these videos are supposed to be really short news blasts and thoughts and impressions of things, games, and what I try and do is more often. I've said that in the past, but I hadn't had a lot of time. That has changed. So uh, expect to see at least one or two of these every week, depending on my schedule. And because, again, I do work in IT and I do run the Outer Haven. And yeah, a lot of stuff going on. But I do thank you for watching the video. And as always, if you like the video, be sure to leave a like. Please leave a comment below because I want to talk about the things that are important to you and me as far as gaming and PC console mobile and vr which i'm starting to get into i i picked up the uh oculus rift s which is right behind me you can't see it because my big hit but i haven't hooked it up yet but i will soon and i also invested in the playstation vr that i've been playing a lot of man that is a lot of fun blood and truth is amazingly good has a couple has a couple bugs but it's so much fun and um astral bot oh my god give us an astral bot with mario and i'm done i'm done game of the year it'll, that'll be the game of the year but for right now i'm really enjoying astrobot so again guys again i think gals again everybody who's watching the video thank you for watching again happy father's day like comment and maybe subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and i'll see you guys and gals and everybody else watching next time take it easy